Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrew Faldi. I am a trader here at SMB Capital. I'm on the options desk. Started off as a student many years ago. Uh, later on, uh, earned a spot on the desk. And my specialty and focus is on options trading and very little, but some uh, experience in automation and automated trading and automated back testing. And today's topic today is on full automation and quant tools. Uh, and since I'm not the qualified person on that, but I do uh, bring a unique perspective in that I understand just enough to be dangerous, which is where a lot of traders start. And then we bring in to you today an expert, uh, Paul Tooney, who is very much an expert and is going to be able to help us uh, understand these quantitative tools for trading. So if you are a non-quantitative trader, you're not experienced or you have a little experience, this is going to help you move closer to the place where you can start to put these tools to work. They can be put to work in your own personal trading. But the most exciting part is this is the tool that if you learn is one of the fastest and most direct routes to becoming a funded trader with our firm. Uh, so it's a very important topic for that reason alone. But even if that's not your ambition, if you trade somewhere else, it's a very powerful tool you can use anyways. Uh, so first of all, welcome, Paul. So glad to have you here. Thank you very um, much. And welcome to all of our guests as well. Yes, nice to be here. All right. Uh, so we have this. This will probably go out as audio only. But just for those listening after the fact, um, we have a, a live audience, several dozen traders here who have interest in quant trading. Uh, so we're going to be taking live questions as well that I'll either recount or Paul will see them as they come in and we'll cover those. But uh, I'll start off with a couple lead off questions for you, Paul. So can you just give us, first of all, a little bit of the story about you, your background in trading and how it came to be uh, that you're the one presenting to us today, how we can use CloudQuant. Okay. Um, well, I joined a um, partner company of SMBs, KTG Trading in Austin, Texas, um, over 10 years ago. Um, it was to support a, a, an alerting package that we used internally um, for our traders to give them an alert to scenarios in the, in the market that they were interested in. And it also had a number of external customers as well. And um, over the years, at that, my role has migrated from there through to writing um, automated models for the traders using that system to writing automated models for the firm using that system and then to developing our own internal backtesting system. Um, and then that morphed into CloudQuant, uh, which we wanted to have a system that allowed traders to write something and then immediately swing it over and take it live in the market without changing any code whatsoever. That was the goal that was established by uh, the CEO and that's what we've managed to achieve. And the secondary goal was to put it on the internet and make it available to anybody who wanted to have a go at it. Democratizing trading was the phrase used. Yes, I recall reading that phrase many times. So for those to get, to get a little more context about a few things just said, uh, partner firm, CEO, et cetera. So SMB Capital is the mm -hmm. New York branch of a partnership uh, between SMB Capital and Kirshner Trading Group. So That's the CEO correct. described and discussed is Andy Kirshner um, and the partner company. And would you call it a subsidiary? How would you... Uh, you're the partner. Where is uh, CloudQuant is a subsidiary of okay. KTG. Yeah. So uh, CloudQuant is a subsidiary of KTG uh, providing a tool to traders outside of the firm, now on the internet. Used to be internal only, now on the internet. Um, and that's allowing a, a window into some pretty amazing stuff to be used. So pretty cool opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so Describe for us the, you've, you've started a little bit, but maybe uh, elaborate on it a little bit, the, the vision of cloud quant and the opportunity it gives to traders. Okay. Um, well, 
ultimately what we're trying to do is uh, make market data that has been, a, it's kind of a, been a closed shop for a number of years. We're trying to make that data available to people who've never, never, may never have looked at it before, or people who are interested but haven't had the depth of data that we have available. So our goal is to get smart people who are outside of our firms and somehow get them into our firm and get them trading. And um, ideally, um, what, what we're looking for is CloudQuant. We're, we're a fund, as well as being this, um, this wonderful backtesting system, we run a fund. And so we're looking for models that we can fund ourselves uh, to allow people to um, profit uh, and take, take to, to market at a, at a phenomenal capital level that they couldn't manage themselves an idea that they have or that they discovered. Um, so uh, expanding on that, the, the, the amount of data that's available, I mean, basically trading hasn't changed a lot um, since the days of the ticker tape. It's a, a trade and a quote, and then you derive from a trade and a quote, um, bars, minute bars, hourly bars, daily bars, and moving averages and Bollinger Bands, and everything else is derived from a trade and a quote. And but that volume of data has been available only down to, even recently, only down to a minute level. Mm -hmm. And what we've tried to do is make the kind of data that we work on down to a millisecond level and also um, supplementary data, news data, or alternative data sets available to people who are not within the closed walls of Wall Street, if we can call Austin, Texas part of Wall Street. Right, right exactly. <laughs> at least the level of access. Uh, yeah. So when you say millisecond, is that millisecond and then what level of data on the millisecond level? Um, well, we, we go down a millisecond on the trade and on each trade we have the most recent bid and ask. So okay. it's a millisecond on the trade and the most recent level one bid and ask or uh, uh, NBBO are there with that trade. Got so, it. So le level one and the most recent trade. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so that I think it walks right into the question uh, that has been posted and also I had next. So I, I think it's just a logical next question. Yes. Is, and you said your words were, we want to find smart people outside the firm and bring them in. So mm -hmm. what is uh, the prerequisite? What kind of skills and experience are required? And even if they don't have them quite yet, what, what would it take to become qualified to use CloudQuant? Um, when we were looking at how to um, achieve that goal of writing a sophisticated model and being able to take it live so it would run fast enough that we could compete in the market, we looked at a number of different programming languages and possibilities. And there were a lot of things out there that were plug and play, that were Lego blocks, building block type uh, systems. But we decided to go with Python as the programming language because Python is the most popular language in the world at the moment. There is a lot of uh, information out there. There are Coursera courses, Udacity courses, YouTube courses on Python. And it's one of those programming languages that even if you, if you adopt it, if you learn it and you decide not to carry on with trading, it will still be incredibly useful to you in the rest of your life. There are all kinds of things that you can do with Python. And that has actually been borne out since we started doing this, which was a number of years ago. Um, we've seen machine learning and artificial intelligence come up, and they are almost exclusively in Python for the, for the ordinary uh, programmer um, doing writing a, a machine learning or an artificial intelligence system without some sort of library that you can pull in to do most of the heavy lifting for you is impossible uh, but those systems are available in python and made available by large companies like amazon and and google and so we feel like we've been justified in that decision but there is a there is as you say there's a step there's a prerequisite to, to achieving that. Now, internally, we have another system, but that we, we can talk about that another time. But externally and internally, your best bet is just to learn Python. It's not a difficult language to learn. Um, it's really just a decision process. All programming is decision processes. And in trading, you, you actually get to step away from some of them. Sometimes you have loops and things in programming, but you don't need that. It's literally just, if this 
and this, all this, then do this. I always describe it as being kind of like uh, setting up a, a sophisticated playlist in iTunes. <laughs> if you can set up a reasonably sophisticated playlist in iTunes, you can probably, in, with, a, with a little bit of work and learning to program, you can probably get something up and running. Okay. I've, I've used mostly my experience, which is limited on all fronts, but my experience was using the internal systems, mm -hmm. uh, which had a lot of, uh, really your main skill was to use a mouse. Yes. And a, a little bit of keyboard action. Um, is this, is CloudQuant getting to that level? Um, the pre-built libraries, things like that. How much of this is, if you understand very little Python, can you find your way through it or do you need to know a lot of scripting? Uh, you really do need to know how to program. It's not a lot. I mean, you can, there's a, uh, there are courses on YouTube that in, depending on what your background is, if you already know how to program, then you can learn Python within a couple of hours. If you don't know how to program within a few days, I think there's a five day course on, on Google by, uh, on YouTube by Google. Um, but you can, and you can get started. We've got demonstration scripts on there that you can look at and work your way through. We've tried to annotate them. You can ask questions. We have forums and we will explain to you even one-to-one, -one, you can send me an email and say, I don't understand what this is doing or how this works. And I, I'm quite happy to go through with people, explain how certain things work. But uh, ideally, if you're going to get good at anything like this, nothing comes without a little bit of hard work. And learning a programming language like Python, not difficult and definitely beneficial to you throughout the remainder of your life. Exactly. Uh, what have you found? I got some other questions coming in. I'm going to ask one more before we move into sure. those. Um, how would you describe the value and the uniqueness of that level of data that you described, that millisecond uh, bid ask and last trade? Why, would you, why, would, why is that so valuable and unique? Um, well, most of these systems that work on a minute, minute basis, those of us who trade in the market on a day-to-day -day basis know that a, a symbol can move dramatically in the space of a second, uh, in a space of five seconds. Having to wait until a minute end to get a price and then not being able to trade at that price, uh, you're basically putting a lot of work in and you're not going to get anything out at the end of it. Uh, we, we always try to... Be, err on the side of conservative with a fill um, so that uh, when we're simulating a trade, we're looking at uh, the bid and the ask is going to be what you're going to fill on and the size of the bid and the ask is what you're going to be able to fill on. So you can't just jump in and say, oh, it traded at the last trade was at this price. I'm going to buy 10,000 shares. It, the system just won't let you do that. Uh, so we try to make it be as realistic and, and it's never going to be 100% realistic, but we try to make it as realistic as we can. Um, and I mean, unique about CloudQuant, um, well, I, 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 I am not a programming genius by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not a mathematical genius. I can program and I'm reasonably good at math. And I came into this as a customer service person and I learned as I was going along and I, I, I would say most people, if they're reasonably logical, can achieve something in this system. And if you just play around with it, it's, if you dedicate yourself a little to it, um, it, it's like that Malcolm Gladwell thing, you know, that the, Malcolm Gladwell talks about you put 10,000 hours in and you're going to be the best in the world at something like playing the violin or, or the Beatles put in 10,000 hours in Berlin practicing right. before they ever broke through as a, as a group. Um, what I always say to people internally is um, if you do something for 100 hours or even 10 hours, like if you wanted to learn to DJ and you put in 10 hours of practice, you'll be so much better than anybody that you know directly that you will, you will look like a genius. And it's the same with this. If you put in a small amount of time, you can, you, you can break through and start achieving things fairly quickly. And it gets, for me personally, got very exciting. And, and the excitement just drives you forward and drives you forward. All right, but it's, it takes that first 10 hours of feeling lost, feeling confused. Yes. Um, you've got to, you've got to have your own breakthrough. Yeah. But it, yeah, but it doesn't, but it doesn't take the next 10 years. 
No, and we're quite happy to help anybody. If somebody shows some dedication and some willingness, we're always willing to assist people. Uh, I'm always helping people. People send me little scripts and I look at them and give them advice on how to improve them and, and, uh, and shortcuts and, and neat tricks that they can try and things that they give. A, a lot of trading, it's just like trading manually. A lot of it is you see an opportunity and you think, oh, well, how can I branch out from that? How can I expand that? And, and the, the great advantage of, of, of auto trading over manual trading is that you can take an idea that you have that maybe at a push you can trade 20 or 30 uh, symbols a day using that idea and you can scale it up dramatically. So if you know you've got an edge somewhere, if you know you've seen something and you think, oh, that's an edge, I wish I could apply it much broader than I can manually, auto trading is, it, it, it's... It's the future. You know, we, we, we talk about um, arbitrage when, when Andy Kirshner started trading back in the 90s. Uh, arbitrage from market to market manually was an opportunity. Mm-hmm. And, and he said it was like shooting fish in a barrel. Is that the phrase? <laughs> yep. that, that it, 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 was, it was simplicity itself. Once you had a sight of it, you could just do it all day long and make money. But machines came and took that over. And, and now it, with each turn of the, of the wheel, uh, more and more things are becoming automated and it's becoming more and more difficult to be a manual trader. You, you absolutely have to have some, uh, Andy describes it as some sort of bionic at your elbow, helping you along, helping you to trade. Uh, even if you are a manual trader, you can, you can use this, this, uh, programming style to to give yourself an edge even with your manual trading but if you can shift into auto trading then uh i don't i I always like to say the world is your lobster for a joke but i mean opportunity is huge it really is huge and we've experienced that on the desk where uh i've sat i'm a remote trader but i've spent uh, anywhere from a couple days at a time to a, a month plus at a time on the desk and uh, I've been there where I'm in a conversation with one of the cloud quant users and the automated traders, and they have to abruptly end the conversation and turn around and look at their machine because it has taken a trade. And mm-hmm. that's clearly a moment in time. And it was some kind of, uh, I think it was like a takeover bid was going on and there, the machine bought into the position in the middle of the spike that would just appear to be an anomaly, almost something that nobody could take advantage of. And there, mm-hmm. we're just having a casual conversation and they are in that position long profiting on that opportunity. And it was something they weren't watching for the day. There was no mm-hmm. chart up for it for the day. There was no scheduled announcement for it. It was just all of a sudden the stock that I had, it was not on my radar, not in my uh, view of something as an opportunity. I'm long and there's huge power in that. And at the, the speed of the processing back to the, almost the, one of the questions or the original question or what we just talked about, the, the importance of that fast and frequent historic data teaches you or informs you on how to trade that in the future. Mm-hmm. And one of the questions in the Q and A is, uh, is this high frequency trading? Now, right. it isn't what I would define as high frequency trading. We, we, um, many years ago, we we were approached by a number of organisations uh, wanting to get us into that environment, and it was decided that that was a money pit. That basically, that you, everybody's trying to beat each other to the punch, and you have to outspend the competition at a constant rate. So our goal was always just to exist in that area between retail traders and high frequency traders, and that is a huge area. You know, retail traders. I often watch videos on YouTube of retail traders trading, and and I look at it, and I'm, I'm amused by the way that they trade, and I think, well, that that's great, but these people must know that there are opportunities out there to auto trade, to do what they're doing manually and automate it. As you said, that, um, you know, a spike is going off. And by the time you've glanced at it on an alerting system, the automated system is already in and it's it's waiting for its exit. You know, and you're not, you haven't even decided whether or not you're going to get in. So 
I, I can't emphasize enough how, what sort of an opportunity this is. I mean, my, myself and my, my two colleagues, we wrote models um, without this system. So it, like I say, it's not, it's not impossible to write a model. It's, it, if you have a, everybody has a unique view of the market. Everybody uh, sees something on a news program or they see, they, they consume something in their everyday life and they think, oh, that, that, that thing is uh, suddenly taking off. And you could write a model that would just sit and trade that thing for you. And you can just continue with your manual trade and watch it trading away in that particular scenario. Uh, but developing a model, uh, developing a model is the difficulty. You know, going back to that Beatles thing and the thousand hours, uh, I was talking to somebody who went through our training program. We've got a number of videos on YouTube to help people through as well. And somebody had gone through it and they said that they felt like they knew how to program and they knew how to program a model using our system. Um, but they felt like they were on the edge of a water, a, br a water and they could see the land in the distance where they were to make models, but they needed a bridge across. They needed to make that step across and they didn't know how to make that step across. And I, I described it as being like, well, so you, you basically, you've learned to play the guitar and you now know how to play the guitar, but you want to know how to write a song like the Beatles. And that's the difficult thing is, that's the question that I find a lot of people ask. Hmm. I, I've learned to play the guitar. How do I write a hit song like the Beatles? And that, that's, that's a difficult thing. You can't give that to somebody. That's opening people's eyes to the opportunity and just saying, well, this is how you should look at it. Um, this is how you should look at the market. It's like, um, I just, it's like drilling for oil in the oil boom is one thing I always say. You know, you, you can either go and drill somewhere where nobody else is drilling and hope to hit upon a new idea, or you can go where everybody else is going and just do it better. Those are the two options that are open to you. Um, but the nice thing about backtesting is you can try it without any risk. You can just Give something a go, see if it works. It doesn't work. You can tweak it a little and try again. And really that's the opportunity of the entire platform is there's no fee to sign up. There's no capital at risk. And if you develop a model that works, you submit it and it can be funded. Mm -hmm. And at no point, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how it's been from my understanding at no point, is there a cost? There's no subscription or anything. Is that correct? There's no subscription. There's no cost. We don't see your script. If you, even when you, on the web page, um, once you've written a script, if you've generated a profit, there's a button that appears that says fund my model. And you can hit that button and it will send us an email. In the email that it sends to us, it just has a description of the result of your model. We Until we've signed an agreement with you, we, we don't look at your code in any way, shape or form. So, and there is no cost. Uh, Andy's idea was that there are needles in the haystack out there and I want to find the needles. And this is the best way to achieve that is to, is to democratize it so that everybody can have a go. And hopefully some people that have never tried it before or have tried it and not had access to the sort of data that we have, will give it a go and we'll find something and, and we can all benefit from it. All right. So anonymous attendee, that's a, mm -hmm. Either they type that name in or that's uh, automatically assigned. I'm not sure. And also, Albert have asked the, the, a very similar question that touches on what you just said. Um, so I'm going to read both of them and you can answer them at the same time. Albert, okay. if we share our trading methodology, how do we stay indispensable to CloudQuant? Because you don't need us anymore to trade the strategy. Uh, the other one is one of the things that worries me about this is that you get to harvest everyone's good ideas. You get to see what's working and start using it yourselves. Okay, and both perfectly reasonable questions. Mm -hmm. um, at, at any point, even once we've entered into an agreement with you and we've seen your code and we're running your code live, which obviously we have to do to get to the point of running code live, because if a system is trading in the market, we can at any time get a query from the SEC about a particular model or trader's trading behavior. And so we need to be able to explain that trading behavior. Um, but we have an agreement with you at any time you can you can rescind that agreement and step away and you take your ip with you ip ip ownership is of the highest importance to us um and my own personal experience with writing trading systems is that they have a shelf life and that shelf life is 
much shorter than you would imagine. It, models need to be tweaked. Models need to be adapted over time. And it is extremely rare for somebody other than the author of the model to know how to tweak their model effectively. So there, there, there is no benefit to, uh, I mean, we've had, we've had situations where we've had people develop models for us and then we've run them and, and then they've needed to be adapted and that person's not available anymore and we've just had to abandon the model. So in my personal experience of it is, number one, it's not in our best interests to have anybody out there saying, oh, they stole my model and they went away. We were trying to bring people in to use the system. So it goes against that. Secondly, uh, from experience, stealing people's ideas doesn't work. You're, you're never going to be as good as the other person. They can always go somewhere else and do it again. Um, and, and as I say, we do give people the opportunity if they wish. I mean, if you're external to, to CloudQuant and you come on board, the payout is 10% uh, of, the, of the profit of the model. You have no risk. You're not putting any risk in at all yourself. And we will back it with a level of capital that you could never, that that 10% that will exceed what you could ever trade manually yourself, or manually or automated yourself with your own capital. Um, at this moment in time, we're standing, I think it's, we just passed 100 million capital backing for models at this moment in time. And we're racing forward. We're, 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 there's something else we need to discuss in this call, uh, the thing we're going to be doing next. We're racing forward to invest more and more and more money in people's models. So we're, we're desperate for ideas and we're fully going to respect your idea and your IP. All right. It sounds like from a practical standpoint and a legal standpoint and an ethical standpoint, it is not in CloudQuant's best interest or KTG's best interest or SMB's best interest to ever get into the practice of um, copying other models. If we find somebody who can write a model and make a profitable model, we want to hang on to that person. Right. <laughs> we, we don't want to hang on to the model. We want to hang on to the brain. There you go. I think that that makes all the sense in the world. Somebody who can develop one model that works very well is a person they want on the team because that edge may change. It can be better. And that mind is able to find more things. Yeah. So it's better to stay, uh, keep the reputation of investing into the people. But, but expanding our DX has asked, increases the likelihood of overcrowding your own trades. Even if you walk away, shelf life is expedited. Yes, that's, that's a good point. Um, but you're assuming that, uh, it's that idea that there is a limited, limited opportunity out there, and and I I don't subscribe to to that idea. Um, I I think there are there's huge opportunities out there. All all alpha decays. All alpha decays. Andy's arbitrage trade in the mid '90s decayed away, and um, there are uh, the. Bollinger Band breakouts decayed away. I'm just trying to use some really old things here as mm -hmm. ideas. All, all of these alpha ideas decayed away. And we're now looking at one of the things that we make available to you is alternative data sets. We're pushing really hard on getting hold of alternative data sets that can give you an edge and making them available to you as simply as we possibly can. And... Uh, so those are things like uh, stock tweets. So you can, you can scan back through stock tweets and, and look at how many people are saying positive and negative things on stock tweets with regard to a particular symbol prior to entering that trade, because that can have a major influence on Twitter or uh, there are other uh, sentiment based systems that we, we subscribe to. Um, but we're, we're looking at, we're building a system that will allow you, allow us to import those, um, those, um, signals and make them available to you in the simplest way possible. That's, that's always the, the, the trick is to get those to, to our smart traders as rapidly as, can, as we can so they can take advantage of that alpha before that alpha decays. So that, that's, that's another one of our goals and I'm, I'm, hopefully I can take that uh, on into what we want to talk about as well, which is not just CloudQuant, the website as it stands, but the future of CloudQuant, which is CloudQuant AI. All right. Let's, I'm going to, uh, that was one of my questions, but I don't want to get too far ahead of the good questions that are already in. So let's, mm -hmm. I'm going to loop back. 
And we'll quickly answer this one. It was answered actually before we hit record, but I'll make sure we catch it for everybody else. Uh, the question is, is this for stocks only or futures as well? It's U.S. equities. We're purely U.S. equities. That's our specialism. That's where we trade on a daily basis at a very high level. And that's what we're good at. So that's what we're, that's what we're at at the moment. There may come a point in the future when we add more uh, uh, other countries, uh, FX or futures or options. But right now, U.S. equities. All right. So in, as you said earlier, learning Python is something that comes back to uh, be valuable for you in many ways. So if you're a futures trader or an FX trader or an options trader, uh, starting with this is something that can guide your decisions anyways, would be valuable. Um, but it looks like maybe in the future, there's an opportunity even to add more markets. So uh, other question, what is the time frame you are looking to trade for equities? Or not? We try not to specify anything, really. I mean, we're looking at, uh, we don't want too much of a drawdown, so we're looking for just a reasonable sharp ratio of uh, 1.5 or above. And it really, it comes down to if, you, if you're if you writing something and you think that it's, it's a good idea, you demonstrate with a back test going back at least a couple of years that it is consistently profitable. And you believe that it can be expanded to utilize capital in the range of 10 to $20 million, then we're interested. That's it. We're, we, we, will, we will not turn away any idea. Even if you come to us and say, it's a single symbol. I'm trading a single symbol, but it's a big symbol and I can use the capital. Then we will take that, that idea on. There is nothing that we won't back if it's, if it's a good idea. Uh, I noticed that somebody's saying they're getting an error from the registration. That's, uh, if, if you're getting an error, it's probably a plugin that you've got in your browser. The simplest way to get around that is to go into incognito mode, whatever the version of the browser that you, is that you have, and register through that. Once you get through the registration, the security on the registration, then you'll be fine and you'll be able to use the website as normal. Do you want me to look at some more questions or should we, should we crack on? <laughs> Hello, is anybody still there? It'd help if I unmuted, I'm sorry about that. It would help. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the next question, how does CloudQuant differ from Quantopian, QuantConnect, Quantiax, which I've never heard of, uh, or others? Can you kind of just describe the, the unique characteristics compared to what is, is out there besides that? Um, all of these systems are very similar. Um, there, there isn't a huge difference between them. Um, I, I would say probably, I, I remember Quantopian initially started out offering people to trade through Robinhood and interactive brokers, and then they withdrew that because their goal, like our goal, was to get people to develop models and then for them to take those models live in the market using the capital in a fund. Um, I, I, I know the thing, I'm not sure what they're doing right now. Um, I would say there isn't, a, as I say, there isn't a dramatic difference. The major difference between ourselves and those companies is that they have developed a product um, from a point of view of getting it backed and then eventually somebody was wanting to make their money back, presumably by that company going public or or selling it on to somebody else. This product has been designed by people who were trying to trade. The, you know, it was designed by quants in a trading firm, trading daily, writing models, and making mon trying to make money. So that's our starting point, and their starting point is they're completely the other end. So I personally feel that our system works better because I've seen it go from start to finish I, I can go from start to finish from an idea to a working model. If, if my idea is correct, I can take an idea from an idea to a working model in a couple of days. I don't believe that their systems can help you get there that way. Um, and as far as uh, an external user, I would, that's talking more internal, but as, to, as an external user, um, we've had some people come on, sign on. They've been already capable of programming. They've written, converted an idea that they already had into our language, tested it, sent it to us, and then got it up and running within a month. 
So that I mean that, that's a very short time scale, but that that for me is 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 the great boon of this system is that it actually does work and it works really well. Whereas with the other systems, you're very much at their I mean, you're you're at their behest. So I don't know. All right. Sounds like the the speed of the opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm taking from a few comments you've said, but um, somewhere around 10 hours, 10 hours of solid effort, you're going to at least feel a breakthrough. You're going to, you're going to see progress as little as a month. That would be the, the fastest time frame. You can be looking at results that can be considered or at least get feedback from somebody who's been funded at least that quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a firm backed uh, platform that's funded up to a hundred million. So I, I see at this point in time, at this point, yeah, with, with, we, uh, we, we have more money sitting on the sidelines waiting to be invested. All right. I think that's, that's probably the biggest advantage there. Uh, so the question we know we can't trade options on there yet, but I, I do want to plug in personally, you know, there's value to knowing the underlying market movement statistics for options traders. So if you're in a swing trading idea or short-term trading idea or uh, event idea, you can get a lot of valuable information using CloudQuant and apply it to your options trading. So that is just something else to consider as far as for any options traders in the room. So I, I do want to go into something else other than just CloudQuant. There's, there's an, a product that we're hoping to launch very shortly that we're calling CloudQuant AI. Um, and this will allow people to more directly interact with the data. So for somebody who's an options trader, and like you're saying, they're wanting to look at the underlying uh, symbols, that, that access where CloudQuant is very much designed from a point of view, it's an event driven trading system. That means that it's not a normal computer program. You run it, it runs from start to finish and it loops around and does things under your control. Mm -hmm. CloudQuant is event driven and the external event that drives it is a trade or a quote or a news update or, or a, 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 an alert from a, an alternative data set. And once that's triggered, then, then it runs your little bit of code that reacts to that. Um, where we're moving to with CloudQuant AI is being able to just access all of the data and you can choose how you want to dip in. It's kind of like a, a play pit of data. You know, there's no system preventing you from gain access, gaining access to the data. You just dive into the data and say, I want to pull all of the open, high, low, close volume prices for this set of symbols and you get a table of that data and then you manipulate it. It's more of a data scientist's point of view. So again, this is all going to be using Python because the, Python is the language generally, Python and R are the two languages that are used by data scientists as well. And so learning Python is a benefit in that way. And you'll be able to make, make your own little queries. We will make standard queries available so you can see exactly how to query the data and pull out certain bits of data that will be of interest and of use to you. So we're going to be making that available very very shortly within the next month or two, I would say tops. Um, it, it's going to be a huge change for that. That's going to set us apart from the likes of Quantopian and the other competitors. Uh, what we're hoping to do is move away from the idea of writing a model and move more into the idea of writing a signal. So that if you have an idea, if you see something in the market that you think influences the direction of symbols, you can write something to pull that out of the market and just be like a, an alert on that particular thing. So put very simply, let's just say um, you wrote something very simply that looked through the news and looked for certain words, certain keywords, gave them a weighted score, and then just generated a score for a symbol. That would be an alpha signal. And if I'm planning to trade, I might look at your alpha signal immediately before I make the trade just to see if you agree with me. If I'm going to go long on Apple, I might look at your alpha signal. So a perfect example of that are the ones that we already have with stock tweets. So immediately before you take a trade in Apple, you could look at stock tweets and say, what's the current sentiment on Apple and the sentiment coming through on stock trades is positive at the moment. You go, okay, it agrees with me. I'm going to take this trade. If it says the overall sentiment is negative, then maybe you don't want to go long in Apple, but you can write something like that. If you can come up with an idea, you can write 
just a signal. So that's going to be our goal in the long run is allow people to play with the data directly rather than sort of operating in a, in a time frame where it goes, it's 9.30 in the morning, the markets have opened, I'm monitoring these symbols, this event happens, I decide whether or not to trade, I'm in the trade, I'm monitoring that trade, I decide when to get out, either on an intraday or a multi-day basis. Um, this is moving over more to an idea of just play with the data and look for patterns in the data overall, over all time, without having to sit and step through a day. So CloudQuant as it stands is an event driven system. CloudQuant AI is more like a sandbox where you get to play with the data. So that would, I would think that would be huge for a futures trader who's wanting to look at what certain equities, they could write something, a system that could just run through, pull out a set of data, do a little bit of analysis and present them with the result on a morning and then they can make the decisions based on that. Right. Uh, Albert's asked, he actually asked a while ago, but it's still relevant because you, you talked about forums and sending an email, things like that. He, but he's asking, do you teach how to develop ideas and then implement them as automated trading strategies. So it's what, what just kind of describe, answer that, and then anything you can elaborate on, on what people can do to be structured in their education. Um, I would say, I mean, I, I will always give personal advice to anybody step by step. It depends what their level is at. Uh, if they're a strong programmer, uh, I can give them very rapid advice. If they're, a, if they're just starting out with programming, um, it's better for them to go through some of the demonstration scripts and learn how those work how a normal trading day works. It depends again on their trading experience. There are two things to know. Does the person know how to program? Does the person know how to trade? And if you've got somebody who knows how to program but doesn't know how to trade, that's a very easy thing to teach. If you've got someone who knows how to trade but doesn't know how to program, they're stuck until they learn how to program. Once they learn how to program, then the world opens up to them. And if somebody, it, it is a very difficult thing to learn. How do you, how do you make decisions? How do you, how do you step through those decisions? But I'm always happy to help people. The forum is always there for people to post a question and other users can respond as well. If nobody else responds, you're guaranteed to get a response from me. <laughs> I yeah. go through the forum every single morning and look to make sure that anybody who's posted in there at least gets one response from me. And if it's something that they need more help with and they don't, it's something that they want to keep private, um, I will we take it offline and we'll just have a direct one-to-one -one email to answer their questions. But I'm always available uh, and all the other users are always available and interested in helping. All right. I like Albert's next uh, very practical question. What is the type of result metrics? Risk to reward, sharp ratio, average profit. What, is it, what does it take to get funded? Well, as I said, we, we try not to be too specific about it. We're quite happy to take anything on it. We, we obviously, as a fund, we're looking at multi-day. We're looking at a sharp ratio of more than 1.5. We're looking at not, uh, not too regular a turnover of symbols. You know, if you're in, you're in, and you hold it for a while. That's the, that's the ideal, but we will never turn away anything if it's a profitable model. If, if you've got a model, we will help you to develop that model as long as it's scalable. That's the, that's the key is if you're looking at something that trades super thin stocks and trades three of them a day, then that's not going to be something as a fund that we're going to be interested in funding because it, we can't make the sort of profit that we need to make out of it. But if you've got something that's scalable, if you've got an idea that's scalable, then we will bust a gut to help you to get that working and profitable. We do even, if somebody has a definite trading system that they know works. Absolutely. Maybe they've written it on another system or they've hired a programmer in the past to write it on a system and that system's gone away for some reason or is no longer competitive and they want to develop it on our system and they have absolutely no idea how to program and they're never going to learn. We do have traders internally who fundamentally do not want to learn to program because mm -hmm. from their point of view, their one hour of their day can be much more profitably spent trading than learning how to program. So they, they would much rather hire somebody to write a program for them. So 
what we did with CloudCon was we allowed people who have got onto CloudCon who can program and learn how to, how to program on the system to make themselves available to people who are experienced traders and have definite trading systems that already work either manually and they can demonstrate a, history, a trading history that is profitable or that they've had automated on another system that has expired or is no longer capable of trading. And we can put those two people together and then they make an arrangement between them as to how they divide the spoils. Um, we just step in as sort of matchmakers. And we say, we've got this person who looks like they've got models. We've got these people who look like they know how to program. We bring them together. They decide who wants to hook up with who and they go ahead and develop a system. So we do that as well. That's a very, very much an edge case, but that's something that we, that we do do for people. All right, so it, it sounds um, qualitative is included besides quantitative metrics. Um, yes. Things that can't be seen in just a, a performance report are also considered. Uh, so it's not, yes. there's not just a minimum sharp ratio, but uh, you could have a high sharp ratio and have some other issues that would need to be discussed. Mm -hmm. I see DX has asked a latency question execution strategies using NASDAQ and EdgeX and keeping track of all orders and all available exchanges. So it looks like DX is asking about how deep into the book do we go? Mm -hmm. um, we, we are, as I said earlier, we are trade, trade and court is the level, NBBO. We, you can look at different exchanges and there's certain things that you can do in a live system that you can't do on the back testing system. So that would depend whether DX is internal or external. Um, we do make some things available. I think he actually mentions it where you, you can go down, ask what average price do I get down to a certain number of shares uh, or how many shares will I get down to a certain price? You can do things like that in live. Um, but we don't have that facility in back testing because when, if you consider the volume of data that we're, that you're passing through in order to properly simulate down to a millisecond level, uh, with back testing, it, it is huge, and it's very—it's actually not unusual for people to write a system that's too heavy for the back tester and ends up taking hours and hours to do a single day. And obviously, we can't have people bogging down the system with a with a, a back test that takes too long. So we have a cutoff, and we say no, you, we can't go beyond that. If we allow people to you do level two, that would bog down the system too much. But in a live situation. If you've got something profitable and you want to go down to that level, then there are opportunities there. Um, but you would probably end up having to uh, put your own hardware in place to trade it internally. So that's an internal question. It's not probably something we maybe discuss on another another call. So the answer is yes, but not not a back test. The no back no back testing facilities for it at all. But yes, we can do it somewhat live, but not on, we can't go down on specific exchanges, but we can go down the book. All right. We answered the registration. I put the registration link in the chat. Okay, now my computer's talking to me. Um, where are your APIs? Uh, so a APIs are for internal use only. Uh, CloudQuant web page is our only uh, external facing system. Um, so you have to do everything through the web page if you're external. Uh, but if you're internal, then get in touch and we can, we can talk you through how to set. We've got all kinds of different things available for people internal that allow them to access the system and APIs. All right. We answered this one, but it's worth repeating. There, there is no cost. This is a venture for democratizing and finding uh, talent and strategies and removing all barriers other than work. It's a work mutually skill. beneficial system. Yes. We put it out there for people to play with it. And as people play with it, then hopefully they become profitable and they take a system live with us and we both benefit. All right. And then the uh, question here, can we, I'm just going to rephrase, can we export AI data uh, for the, he says, I need to do deep learning in my machine. No, you will not be able to export the data. Obviously, when you look at the market data is something that we license from vendors. 
and there is a licensing agreement for that. So when you use something like CloudQuant, uh, if, you, if you try to pull data from CloudQuant, the current website, um, there was, there's a limitation on what you can put to the console. There's a limitation on what you can put into a file. There's, there are limitations around the system that are there because of the agreements that we have with our data vendors. Um, the same will be true of CloudQuant AI. You, you will be able to do, um, and I know JP Nieto, <laughs> we talk regularly. There are things that you can do on the system that we will make available. Um, it will be, if you want to investigate in advance of it com becoming available, it's going to be using a system called Jupyter Labs. Hmm. So any, those of you that have used Jupyter Notebooks, uh, it's, uh, it's sort of the next step in Jupyter Notebooks. So Jupyter Labs is, is what it's going to be based on. But CloudQuant AI, you will access the system and you will do all of your research within the system. And we're going to try and make it so that people can share things that they found. You know, they can make notebooks public, publicly available to everybody else on the system if they so choose. So somebody can write something, make it publicly available. Somebody else can pick it up and run it and then tweak it and make it available again. So that the, we're trying not just to democratize it, but also get people sharing ideas a lot more and, and tricks and tips. All right. Um, can you do two things on this question? Can you type your email address into the chat? And then for those just listening afterwards, can you uh, say it out loud for us? Feedback at cloudquant.com. Oh, all right. I, I don't even think you have to type that. <laughs> Feedback at cloudquant.com. Yes. All right. Um, it's also in the chat for those here. It is. Right, so uh, what do I mean by internal and external? Uh, internal are traders who have already been hired by either KTG or SMB um, who are trading within our system. So some of them are physically on location in New York or in Austin, Texas. Some of them are trading with us remotely. Um, so that that's... That's what I mean by internal and external. Because in order to have access to APIs, in order to have access to more of the data, um, you have to be an employee, basically, or, or the equivalent of an employee. Uh, that, that's what our contracts with our vendors require us to do. So um, that's why access to those systems is, is, in, is internal only. All right. And uh, there's one other topic on uh, the agenda, and if you can touch on it briefly. You've mentioned AI, you've mentioned data, you've mentioned the difference between models and signals. Uh, where does machine learning fit into all this? Um, well, machine learning and AI are generally used interchangeably by a lot of people. But as far as we're concerned, machine learning is... is, is where it's at. Machine learning requires a huge, does require a huge amount of data, as, J.P. Nieto had said, um, and that's why we're trying to make CloudQuant AI, because we've, what we've discovered with CloudQuant is that those people who want to do machine learning are uh, trying to pull data off our system so they can get it onto their own machine and then run it through their own processes. And we can't, we can't allow that data to be leaked out of the system in that way. So we looked at how we could make the, the huge amount of data that we have available uh, available to, to people to do machine learning on. So the easiest way to do that was to set up a system that allows them to run, run their ideas on our own service with our own data. So everything stays within the server. None of it comes out and back to the user. All of it stays within the server. So um, machine learning, most of, most of the work that most people do on machine learning, if you ask anybody who's doing machine learning, um, and, most of the time they spend is cleaning up the data. You know, you don't, you, you go out and scrape some data off a web page here, uh, put, download some data from there. It'll be, it'll be missing some values. It'll have some values that are supposed to be ints or floats and aren't. So you end, end up spending, I think, the, the, about 80% of your time normally is spent cleaning up data. Um, what we're aiming to do is have all of the data already cleaned, already there, and it's just a, you just go in and do whatever you need to do with that data on our systems. Um, so, uh, I mean, the, the, there's not an awful lot I can say about machine learning. I, I'm not an expert on machine learning. We have people in, within the firm who are experts on machine learning. Um, but 
machine learning is basically just loop it, doing the same sort of thing that we used to do manually. You're looping through a series of ideas, testing out to see where the cutoffs are, where the, where the profitability lies. You know, if you're, if you're, doing, if you're using that oil boom example, you're trying to find out where the edges of the, uh, of the lake of oil are under the water and you're allowing the machine to do it for you rather than manually going through it and doing it over and over and over yourself. So uh, the hope is that with Cloud Quant AI, we will be able to uh, make that data available to people so that they can do what they want to do whilst staying within the remit of the contracts that we have. All right. Um, next question coming in the chat here. May I create new factors on your data? Uh, you lost audio as well. Albert S is saying we lost audio. I have you. So can anybody else okay. confirm if they can hear us, I guess you can't confirm if you can't hear us. Good audio. Okay. Good. Audio. Okay, good. Um, yes. I mean, you can create new factors. I, I would say the best thing for Mark to do is to get in touch and I can put him in touch. I'm assuming he's talking about uh, machine learning. Um, I can put him in touch with somebody who can go through that in a little more detail. Um, but yes, I mean, the, the, the nice thing about, about having a programming language to work with is that you can do anything that you want to do, anything at all. When you're in a system where it's locked down, where you have certain bits of data and you can apply them to each other in certain ways, all that flexibility is taken away. With CloudQuant and with CloudQuant AI, you can do anything that you want to do. Um, if, you, you can, if you do something that looks like it's going to lock down our system, cause a problem for our system, then we will probably terminate it and let you know that what you did caused a problem. Uh, but you can basically do just about anything. All right, got that. Just making sure I haven't missed anything. All right, and then um, I think that covered it. I was checking my list too. Um, any other, I'm, I'm just gonna summarize from my perspective real quick that any type of thing like this, you, you've all been here. We have a, a good group here that have spent some time. We've learned some things, we've asked some questions. Uh, my encouragement to everybody here is to take some action. Um, there, I do some programming. I learn, I trade options, and those are difficult things to learn. Whatever you have learned and become good at, it took some effort. If this sounds like something that you see as an opportunity, you can see that this is an environment that's going to invest in you, is going to answer your questions, uh, that clearly a different culture than you're going to find in many places where there is no cost. Um, this is about really working together uh, that you can take the first step. There's a link in the chat. If you are listening after the words, it's just cloudquant.com and go check that out. Uh, and take, take the first steps. We, we've heard today that you may be 10 hours away from feeling like you're really making some solid progress. So maybe this was the first hour. Maybe you have nine more hours. Maybe you have 10 more hours. Um, but this is a big opportunity uh, backed by a large firm, of talented people. And uh, I hope you decide to take that action today. There's several, uh, clearly several programmers with some experience that have the skill set. And it's possibly time that they can apply those in a way that can be super valuable for them and for the firm and for the community they can get connected with. So uh, any other closing thoughts you want to share today, Paul? Um, yes, I've just posted in the chat here, Code Academy, C-O-D-E-C-A-D-E-M-Y.com. I'll just search for Code Academy and Python on Google. They have a great training course. It's interactive, it's within your browser. It has the programming language there, you can type it in, you can run it, and it gives you the result there. So as you're learning Python, that's a great resource. I, I really love Code Academy for learning anything programming-wise. Um, but if you want to learn Python, I would think that would give you a really great start. Um, the only other thing I would say is, yes, yeah, learning Python is going to be beneficial to you whether you end up writing an automated trading system or not. Programming is a, we're moving into a future that's becoming more and more automated in every role of society. And 
learning Python is going to be a huge edge for you, no matter what you do. So I, I see no downside at all to learning Python. If you learn Python and then are able to use our systems to generate a profitable model, then that's a bonus for everybody. So um, give it a go. I don't, I, I honestly don't think you can, there's any regret that you can have in learning Python. Right. And, and, and we would love to see you and I would love to help you write a profitable system. All right. If you have any other questions that come up or we didn't get to, we missed them or they, they've come in just recently as we're closing up, please send an email, feedback at cloudquant.com uh, or visit cloudquant.com. Uh, there was one comment here. If you have any trouble with Chrome, just try a different browser. Other browsers are working fine. I use Chrome all day and every day and it works fine okay. for me. But I, I do know that people do. It's just the registration. And if you go to incognito mode or the equivalent in whatever browser you're using, uh, private mode, privacy mode, and sign up through there, that, that will get you past the problems and then you should be fine. And DX is asking if we can pull in and monitor live streaming satellite data. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm wondering if he's meaning those, those companies like that's Christmas, uh, the Christmas data, the parking, the Christmas lot data. Data, the parking lot data and the, uh, and the oil refineries, the oh, okay. height, height of the, the storage tanks. Um, those are certainly two pieces of data that we've looked at, uh, getting again, talking about back testing. Um, we, we are back, we are back testing. So we would have the data that would be historic. Um, but if, uh, and we wouldn't ever purchase any data like that live, unless we had somebody that had a model that was profitable enough to cover that cost and more, you know? So right. if somebody came, if, if we got the data, made it available, somebody wrote a model and the model looked supremely profitable, then yes, we would sign up for that data and make it available live and we would take that model live. Any, any, anything we can do to help people have a profitable model, we will, we will do our best to achieve that. But right now, no, we don't have that. Uh, but we are constantly adding. We're actually, the major problem with adding data to any backtesting system is that everybody presents their data in their own unique style. And no, there is no agreed formatting for all of these different types of data. So we have written a system that sits in between every type of data that we can purchase and our end user so that it presents them to it in a format that they will be able to use and understand and only have to learn the one way of approaching it. So that, that's, that's one thing that we're trying to make for a cloud available for the launch of CloudQuant AI so people can analyze all these different data streams and, and hopefully find something unique for themselves. Perfect. All right, well, we hope to have you back in the near future. If you have any feedback uh, for SMB uh, about doing more quant webinars, we'd love to hear it, any ideas you have. So webinars and podcasts, audios, recordings, anything like that. Okay. All right, thank you again, Paul. We really appreciate your time. We're excited to hear about these developments and I, I hope at least a couple of guys here, a couple of gals uh, are gonna take advantage of this and we're gonna hear some great things about um, what they do in the future. So I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very yes. much. All right, everyone have a good rest of your day, good rest of your week, and we'll see you in the future. Bye.